section 6.4. This is our last lesson of the semester. So we've dealt with properties of exponents, solving equations that have exponents. Now we just want to dip our toe in the water and a little bit of talking about exponential graphs. Um, so what do we mean by the term exponential growth? We're going to spend some time next semester talking about exponential growth. But you think of exponential growth, if you take out the mathematical word exponential, you think of something meaning like rapid growth, high growth. You know, you want your investments to have exponential growth. You know, if you're a company and you have social media, you want the number of users to have exponential growth. Look at this. This is just a chart of uh, Snapchat user growth. Um, so there's some real, real data and some projected data. Um, if I'm Snapchat and I'm sitting in front of a group of investors, which of these graphs do I want them to believe? You know, I want them to believe that this is, this is the Snapchat user growth. That's what I mean by exponential growth, that it is always going to be increasing. What I don't want is, you know, something like this. That indicates that at some point, and if I can read this, this is what Q4 of 2020, that somehow indicates that perhaps the number of users is leveling off, okay? So, I mean, they still have a lot of users, but it means the period of growth is over. So that changes how a company um, would maintain and thrive. So if we look at these two graphs, you know, if you look at these, which is better? Well, if it's talking about user growth, then yeah, that top graph is better. So if you're talking about um, user growth, then you know it's the top graph is the better one. If I'm talking about cost per user, you know, so if I'm talking about cost, I don't want cost to be exponential. I want cost to somehow level off. So if this, if this graph were about cost, the second graph would be there. If the graph is talking about shareholder volume, well, if shareholder uh, value, then I want that to be something that's always increasing. So I would prefer the top graph for, uh, for that. So when we get back after the break, we're going to talk about exponential models, things that grow exponentially. We'll have some word problems to do that. But what we want to do today is just, like I said, some easy graphs so you can see what a graph looks like that has exponential behavior. So let's just graph one. Um, f of x is equal to 2 to the x. Okay. So I'm going to give you some values for x. We'll plug those in. So what is 2 to the negative 3? You know from properties of exponents, that is 1 over 2 cubed. That is 1 eighth. 2 to the negative 2. You know that 2 to the negative 2 is 1 over 2 squared. That number is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 1. So 2 to the negative 1 is 1 over 2 to the 1. That is 1 half. 2 to the 0. Properties of exponents. Anything to the 0 except 0 is going to be 1. So 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 2 cubed is 8. So I can plot all of these points. Let's start with the middle with 0. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. Um, and then the point 2, 4. And then the point 3, 8, which is right here. And now let's graph these fractions. So at negative 1, 1 half. At negative 2, 1 fourth. And it gets probably too, uh, too tight for my resolution. But at negative 3, 1 eighth. So we can see that these numbers are getting smaller and smaller. So the behavior of what you see is something that looks like this. So that is my exponential growth. What happens is these numbers like negative 4, negative 5, you're getting closer and closer to 0. So what we say here is that y equals 0 is what we call a horizontal asymptote. It's a line that my graph is not going to cross. It's going to get ever so close to it, but it's not going to cross. So this is what it looks like, the graph of 2 to the x. Now let's answer some questions. Um, if we look at this, what is the domain of this function? So again, we talked about this earlier in the class. Domain is the set of all x values. Start traveling from left to right on the x-axis. Your domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. That's going to be the case for all of these exponential functions. Negative infinity to infinity. 
What is the range of this function? That's the only time we're allowed to travel on the y-axis. Y-axis, you don't see any y-values until you get to zero. Okay, so zero to infinity is the range. And it does not include zero. Okay, so it gets very close to zero, but it does not include that. Okay? So that's just a graph of 2 to the x. Let's look at another example. Negative 2 to the x. Now, what do you know about graphs before? Remember when we graphed y equal x squared, and then we graphed y equal minus x squared? What was the difference between these two graphs? It was just a reflection over the x-axis. You're going to see the very same thing here. Well, we already know what 2 to the x looks like. So 2 to the x looks something like this. This is 2 to the x. So let's check what negative 2 to the x looks like. That's going to be the negative of 2 to the negative 1, which is negative 1 over 2. And then this is going to be the negative of 2 to the 0 which is going to be negative 1, and then the negative of 2 to the 1, which is negative 2. So at negative 1, negative 1 half, uh, 0, negative 1, and 1, negative 2. So what you see this graph doing is something like this. So this is negative of 2 to the x. Okay, So you could plug in points to get that, or you could recognize, hey, if I know the graph of 2 to the x, negative 2 to the x is just a reflection over the x-axis. Questions about this, the domain. The domain of all of these exponential functions, negative infinity to infinity. The range of this function, y values start what at negative infinity, and they go up to the value of 0. Uh, the horizontal asymptote is the line right here, y equals 0. Now, 2 to the x plus 1. So let's look at this graph. Now, remember what we did. What did we do before when we had y equal x squared? And then we graphed y equal x squared plus 1. What did that do? That moved the graph up or down. It moved the graph up by one unit. So I'm expecting the same thing to happen here. So let's just plug in these points and see. This is 2 to the negative 1 plus 1. That is 1 half plus 1. So that is 3 halves. And then this is 2 to the 0 plus 1, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. 2 to the 1 plus 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is 3. So negative 1, 3 halves, 0, 2, and 1, 3. Something like this. Now what this graph is doing is something like this. So this is 2 to the x plus 1. Now here's another real easy way to graph this, is just to do this concept. Knowing that from over here, all we're doing is moving the graph up by 1. So what I can do here is just say, okay, if you look at this plus 1 here, let's just move the graph up by 1. So let's move everything up by 1, okay? And now let's just graph 2 to the x. But pretend that this is the y-axis. So 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. So you can just graph it like this. So all you can do is just say, whatever this number is, draw a horizontal line there. And then pretend like all you're graphing is this. Graph 2 to the x from that horizontal line. Okay? Questions about this, the domain is always negative infinity to infinity. The range of this guy, the range of this one starts from 1 to infinity. And the horizontal asymptote is just the line y equal 1. Okay, So your horizontal asymptote is going to be whatever that number is right there. Okay, 
that is the horizontal asymptote. So you can basically just move the graph and graph it from there. So in, cap, in case here, when I look at this one, 2 to the x minus 1 horizontal asymptote, y equal minus 1. So the easiest way to graph this one is just to go to negative 1, draw a line. And now, from that line, let's just graph 2 to the x, okay? So what is 2 to the negative 1? That's 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2. So from this purple line, at 0, go up 1. At 1, go up 2. At negative 1, go up 1 half. And now you see the graph right here. Now that's a little bit easier than if I plugged in if I plugged in the values, I would be doing something like two to the negative one minus one, one half minus one. That's one half minus two halves. So that's negative one half. Okay, there are places mistakes could be made, but that's the point negative one, negative one half. Okay, a little bit more work there. But if you would just go and say, let's draw a vertical line at that number. And then let's just pretend the problem is only that, okay? And graph it from that line. So the domain of this, like all of them, negative infinity to infinity, the range, just go look at the graph, the range is all the numbers from negative 1 to infinity. So negative 1 to infinity with a parenthesis there. Now this one is a little bit different. The exponent has an x minus 1. So let's just look at this. 2, if I plug in a 0, I get 2 to the 0 minus 1, which is 2 to the minus 1, which is 1 half. Plug in a 1. 2 to the 1 minus 1 is 2 to the 0, which is 1. Plug in a 2. 2 to the 2 minus 1 is 2 to the 1, which is 2. So the point 0, 1 half, 1, 1, and 2, 2. And you see the graph doing something like this. And we're not going to spend a whole lot of time with this because we've run out of time this semester. But this is just, um, it's a horizontal, and it moves it, what, to the right by 1. Okay, so it's 2 to the x, move to the right by 1. So we're not going to focus too much on problems that have x minus 1. There are a couple of them in the homework, but we're really not going to focus on that on the testing from now on out. If you look at this, the horizontal asymptote is right here, y equals 0. And so if you look at the domain of this, easy answer, negative infinity to infinity. The range is 0 to infinity. And y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So again, the range goes from 0 to infinity there. And again, let's do this. So if, if x minus 1 moved it to the right, I expect this one to move it to the left. So let's just try a few values. So 2 to the negative 2 plus 1, that's 2 to the negative 1. That's 1 half. 2 to the negative 1 plus 1 is 2 to the 0. That's 1. 2 to the 0 plus 1 is 2 to the 1. That's 2. So negative 2, 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, 2. And just with three points, you can tell which direction this graph is going. So the domain, negative infinity, infinity, range is from 0 to infinity, and the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Because if you look at it, you've got 2 to the x plus 1 plus 0. That number off by itself is your horizontal asymptote. So this one, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is 0 to infinity. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. So again, what you should be able to see is pretty much with three points, you can tell what this graph is doing. Um, so you can see the graph moving off in one direction. Um, we're going to get run out of time, so we're not going to get into a lot of details about getting harder versions of this graph. But what you should always know 
in this case is the the number that's off to itself that is your horizontal asymptote so whatever that number is that's your horizontal asymptote and it would show up in the range so let's look at an example of 4 to the x so 4 to the negative 1 that is 1 over 4 to the 1 that's 1 fourth 4 to the 0 is 1 4 to the 1 is 4 so if I graph these points 0 1 1 4 negative 1 1 fourth something like that and so what you see this graph doing based on those three points is right here now this is growing a little bit faster than 2 to the x 4 to the x is going to grow much more rapidly so you see a higher dis a higher incline over the exponential domain negative infinity to infinity horizontal asymptote y equals 0 range is 0 to infinity so this domain negative infinity to infinity the range 0 to infinity horizontal asymptote y equals 0 this is a little bit different 4 to the negative x what does this do so this is 4 to the negative of negative 1 that's 4 to the 1 that's 4 4 to the negative 0 well that's 4 to the 0 that's 1 4 to the negative of 1 that's 1 over 4 to the 1 1 fourth so negative 1 4 0 1 1 1 fourth looking at those three points and you can tell the only thing this graph can do is this so this is 4 to the negative x. And all I needed was to plot three points, and I could see the general shape. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is 0 to infinity. Because there's a 0 out to itself here, the horizontal asymptote is just y equals 0. So negative infinity to infinity. The range is 0 to infinity. And y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. 4 to the x plus 1. Like I said, the easiest way to graph these is go graph the horizontal asymptote. Here's the line y equal 1. Now, once you've done that, it's basically you're pretending like I'm moving the graph up. Now, just focus on graphing that, 4 to the x. Okay? What's 4 to the negative 1? 1 over 4 to the 1. 1 fourth. 4 to the 0 is 1. 4 to the 1 is 4. Graph these points relative to this purple line. 0, 1. 1, go 1, 2, 3, 4. Right there. And then negative 1, 1 fourth. Something like this. So what you see here is the graph doing this. So when you graph this point 1, 4, it says go over 1 and 1, 2, 3. Oh, I did it wrong. When I say that, go over 1 and 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4 right there. Okay, So that is the graph. So the point is, when you're graphing 1, 4, you're graphing over 1, up 4 from the purple line. Okay, So it's really the point 1, 5. The domain, negative infinity, infinity, horizontal asymptote, y equal 1, and the range is 1 to infinity. Four raised to the x plus 1. If you plug in a negative 2 here, this is 4 to the negative 2 plus 1. That's 4 to the negative 1. That's 1 fourth. 4 to the negative 1 plus 1. That's 4 to the 0, which is 1. 4 to the 1 plus, uh, excuse me, 4 to the 0 plus 1 is 4 to the 1. That's 4. So negative 2, 1 fourth, which is right here, negative 1, 1, 0, 4. And what you see this graph doing is something like this. The horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And I can see it because 
There's a zero off to itself right there. Negative infinity, infinity is a domain. The range is zero to infinity. And that takes us into the uh, homework. Okay, so just take a look at these. Um, you should be able to do these basic graphs. You know, 3 to the x should be just like graphing 2 to the x and 4 to the x. Um, and here's the point. On the test, I think I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the numbers here that go in for x. But what you want to do when you see something like 3 to the x plus 2, what you want to do is figure out in this box right here, you want to figure out what would make x plus 2 equal to 0. Okay, that's the value. That's the number I want to pick for x. So I'm going to pick a negative 2 here. And then you just pick the numbers on either side of that, negative 3 and negative 1. If I pick those three numbers, I'll get a great representation of this graph. So what's going to happen here is when you plug this in, you're going to have um, 3 to the negative 3 plus 2. That's 3 to the negative 1. That's 1 third. 3 to the negative 2 plus 2. That's 3 to the 0. That's 1. 3 to the negative 1 plus 2. That's 3 to the 1, which is 3. That gives me enough information to graph it. So when you see something like this, if I was graphing 3 um, to the x minus 3, and I'm trying to pick points, you want to pick the point that makes that 0. Well, 3 would make that a 0. Pick the numbers on either side of that. These are the best numbers to pick, okay? You could pick any three numbers you want, but if you pick these three, you're getting that same representation of what we saw where you see the three points together that tells you which direction uh, this graph goes.